Hello, Carl. Nice to have you on a small show here. We would like to talk today about cybersecurity, talent, and what do we do with this problem or not a problem in the industry? Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Well, thanks for having me firstly. And uh, I think it's a very interesting topic. Nice. So can you tell me what you do for a living and how you help the industry? Absolutely. Uh, well, yeah, I, I work for a company called Stott & May, which is a leading cybersecurity recruitment company. Uh, we do a little bit more than cyber, but obviously that's where I focus is around cybersecurity. And how we try and help is obviously solving this talent shortage for companies. Um, you could argue that we make it worse by moving people around the industry. But um, yeah, ideally, it's trying to match, obviously, the the top clients with their issues uh, with, with highly talented individuals in the cyberspace. And my specialism is more around the services and vendor market within cybersecurity. So it is an interesting topic because usually when we talk about shortage, we're talking about customers, analysts, CISOs, directors, network engineering, you focusing on the vendors. And I don't think a lot of people understand what the vendor needs. They need development, they need other people. Can you tell me more of what kind of positions vendor are in need? Yeah, absolutely. And, and sometimes I don't think it changes, by the way, from the end client to the vendors, because I think the vendors are trying to solve the same issues the end clients are obviously trying to solve by using people. And obviously they're providing the technology to go hand in hand with that and improve on the processes, people and technology part. Um, but I think, yeah, if we're looking at the vendor market, for example, um, obviously majority of the focus right now is moving a lot of the products into cloud environments. So there's a lot of issues around, around that. And obviously that's the same again again, that the, the end clients are, are doing a lot of transformation themselves. So we're seeing a lot of transformation from products, a lot of transformation from end clients, and that's where it's sort of matching up. So the types of positions that you will often see from a vendor are on obviously the promotion side, as we say, the sales, the business development and marketing and customer success aspects. And then where the harder to fill roles right now are a lot around development. So anything from machine learning, artificial intelligence, uh, you know, software engineering, a variety of skills around that. And obviously, depending on the cyber vendor, you can then start going into what's their specialism. So is it around, uh, do they need red teaming individuals? Do they need uh, various other, you know, security researchers threat intelligence analysts you know you can start going into the uh the assets that they need and obviously you know this is such a wide space and i'm sure we're going to talk about some of the money that's going into this space so it's, it's a very it's very much a challenge for individuals because there's so much choice right now to go uh, you know of where to go and work which is great for the market but obviously that's what's creating also another shortage so do you feel that the requirement changed for the last five years with moving to SaaS and AI? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we've seen a lot more uptake in terms of machine learning requirements, artificial intelligence requirements, um, trying to understand data uh, from that perspective, because a lot of these companies are producing vast amount of data, especially when you look in the threat landscape. Um, and how to deal with that and how to manage that. But also, like I said, you, you know, the amount of transformation, there's been a lot more focus around application security vendors, a lot more focus around cloud security. You know, so we've gone from very basic things of, of, of phishing all the way through to, you know, now what we're seeing with the average threats, you know, a lot around endpoint, a lot around um, ransomware now. So, you know, wherever the threat has moved to, uh, has seen the funding and seen the companies then then boom out that market and obviously as uh, as you know there's a lot of acquisitions a lot of uh, you know money going around in the market at this point. So if a person wants to move to the AI space as a software engineer, what would you recommend them to learn? What do they need to know? Because sometimes you see the requirement of five years of AI or machine learning or ten years of something that only was invented four years ago. Well, exactly. Yeah. And, and that's a real challenge with our clients. You know, we have to spend a lot of time educating our clients before we can even think about candidates because their expectation can be very extreme and you can be looking for these unicorns that just don't exist. And it's such a competitive market that if you start going into the AI and machine learning, you are competing with the big companies because Microsoft want these, Google want these, you know, that whole fang landscape really want these type people. So you have to be 
you have to be open. So, you know, some of my clients have even taken people straight out of a PhD or master's degree around, around machine learning and artificial intelligence to try and get these people in at an earlier stage. So what I would say, if you're going to go down that route is focus on uh, education, which I don't normally say on the cyber side, but I think it, having, there's some very good computer science and various other linked around AI and machine learning education. Now, if you're already in the workplace um, go and actually either take a part-time uh, master's or PhD or go and practice the skill sets yourself. So, you know, that could be anything from on machine learning side, you know, Python, working on graphing, working on NLP, you know, these various, these various skill sets and actually go and present that, like actually start producing this for your LinkedIn page if you really want to get noticed from that. And that's the same across any skill set, blogs, uh, sharing your knowledge with with people will help you get hired because there is a shortage in many of these areas, software engineering, machine learning, cybersecurity. There is a shortage of skill set right now in terms of actual talent. And I think we need to find that talent. And the way you can do that is by putting yourself in the shop window by actually expressing and showing what you can do. So you post a lot on your LinkedIn page about vendors that raise money. I'm wondering first, what was the idea behind it? And second, from what do you see? Where does this money get used for training people, for paying people salaries? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So the reason I did it was um, there's a lot of excitement about the cyber market right now, and and being able to, you know, I'm I'm very fortunate to have a lot of followers. You know, start on May as a as a recruitment business has a lot of followers. So we 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 touch a lot of bases. We touch people in the DevOps space, the technology space, the the fintech space. So. You know, what I did that for was to show how much money was being invested in cyber and try and convince people outside the industry to come in to, you know, meet the short term needs of some of these shortages. Um, so it was a bit it was, I suppose, preying on a little bit of a spotlight for, for the cybersecurity market. And I think it's frightening. You know, you look at my weekly figure that comes out Friday. You know, we're talking 200, 300, if not 500 million being spent, invested in the sort of C to Series B, maybe Series C. Uh, level which shows the amount of investment the amount of capital currently in the market when you're asking me on where is it spent often a vc wants to um ob obviously increase revenue right so it depends on which stage it is if it's a vc normally it's about increasing revenue and increasing growth so that could be hiring a bigger sales team that could be ramping up the product adding new service lines adding new products to that whatever the objective is of the company to grow that is what the focus is and like you say a lot of the a lot of that money will be spent on talent. A lot of that money will be spent on either adding in more software engineering, either adding in more marketing sales folk. And obviously they need to get a return of investment from somewhere. So when you see these funding rounds, normally an aspect of that will be towards marketing and sales and that promotion outset. If it's a private equity firm that's investing, that can go either way because it depends on the, obje the objective of the private equity firm. So that could be, we need to cut back for a short amount of time to get our money back quickly. Or that could be, actually, we're investing because I want to enter. I think this product has a lot of uh, you know, run rate. They've got great models. So let's, let's replicate them overseas or into different markets or add different product lines. So again, it always depends on what the objective is but majority of the money is often spent on talent. Awesome. We only have a few, like actually a minute left. Quick question. Why vendor fail in your perspective? Say that again, sorry. Why vendor fail? <laughs> uh, mismanagement of money is, de is definitely up there. You know, knowing what to spend. I think companies, companies get thrown a lot of money at them. So I think, um, I think not having the right operation, the right back end services around around the company people just tend to go let's let's put all the sales people in rather than actually knowing how to keep retain these people how to get the best out of them so i think yeah it's often a people issue at why why vendors fail and i don't ever you know it's very rarely a money issue unless you've got the product right and often like i said that comes around hiring the right people and making sure you've got the right people around you if you're an executive awesome carl thank you very much it was a pleasure thank you Appreciate the time.